More Heart Than Talent Radio. More Heart Than Talent Radio is brought to you today by my new Breakthrough Factor audio program. The Breakthrough Factor audio training is seven hours of breakthrough content, and today I'm going to give it to you for free. This training is currently for sale on my website for $497. You're probably wondering why. The simple answer is I want to persuade you to try my new coaching program called the Jeffrey Combs Inner Circle because it's my proven system to teach everyday people and entrepreneurs how to break through to success. When you join the Jeffrey Combs Inner Circle, you will participate in two private video coaching calls per month that you and other members receive access to. On each call, the first half, I will be teaching the skill of the week and giving you an assignment related to the topic. You will have the opportunity to post your homework in my private JCIC Facebook group. The Facebook group is a place where you can interact with me, my Golden Mastermind team, and other JCIC members. On the second half of the coaching call, I'll be coaching JCIC members one-on-one live for you to observe. As a member, you can register for your own live one-on-one coaching session during this call. They're all recorded and posted in the JCIC members area. So as an active member, you can log in and review any past coaching sessions. You will also receive a new members welcome kit and my new Breakthrough Factor audio program absolutely free for joining. You can sign up today for just $197. This is no ordinary coaching program. Sign up now to begin your breakthrough process now. Go to goldenmastermind.com forward slash circle to get started today. Jeffrey Combs, president and founder, Golden Mastermind Seminars Incorporated today. More heart than talent mindset video. Now for the last several weeks, sometimes I'll say mindset call. That is because for 21 years, this was a mindset call starting out at five o'clock Eastern Standard Time in the summer and fall of 1998. Now here we are in the fall of 2018. So welcome to More Heart Than Talent Mindset Video Live. So welcome aboard here. I see Frank Pecoraro ringing in here. Monica in England, welcome to the call. Welcome to the video today. Tracy in Florida, welcome, welcome, welcome. So I'm in the More Heart Than Talent Golden Mastermind office here in my home office delivering content for you. And today's content today is going to be on the six traits of emotionally resilient people. And I'll cover a few quick annou- announcements. I'll move into the inspirational portion of today's video. This Saturday, I'll be in one of my favorite cities in the United States. I grew up in I grew up in the Midwest, right outside of Omaha, Nebraska. Also lived for part of my life in Missouri, so I am a Cardinal fan. I will be in St. Louis, Missouri this Saturday, September 16th from 9 until 4 at the Marriott right across the street from the St. Louis Airport. Next Saturday, I will be in Saddlebrook, New Jersey. I want to thank my host, Diane Hughes-Hunt, who is hosting me in Saddlebrook. This will be her third hosted event of this year, plus one last year. That is That completes Diane's four FECTA, and I will also be back on the East Coast several times this year before the year end. So there are, those are the next two dates where you will have the opportunity to see me live. Now, the content that I'm delivering for the rest of this year will be focused on consciousness, recovery, letting go, separating your feelings from events so that you can elevate your awareness. Your awareness creates a new energy and that's the energy that allows you to attract your reality. People in situations that if you're building a leveraged business, it will allow you to attract a more productive type of person, someone who is in less conflict, someone who's going to have a better product experience, someone that is much more consciously aware and you seek to attract your reality, these types of people, on a frequent occurrence. So as you begin to step into your power, and that means your power is your esteem, you'll be able to attract more frequently people who are aware, people who have belief, people who are conscious, people who are committed, people who are prosperity conscious, and people who are seeking results and solutions. So that less frequently you will be in any conflict, and you will also spend less time feeling anxious, specifically a 
abandoned, rejected. You'll let go of your guilt and shame. You'll spend less time in grief and apathy, and you won't be in anger, hate, or resentment. Now, as you move into consciousness, that is your awareness. That means you know. And when you K-N-O-W, when you absolutely know, then you're able to separate your feelings from the events that kept you anxious. Anxious is also worry. A large percent of society spends a large percent of their time being overwhelmed, being undercompensated, and trading time for dollars, barely being able to get by. Now, if you're on this video today or if you're on this live today and you seek to improve your skills, your habits, and your mindset, then some of the content today will be applicable. Anytime that content is delivered, your objective is not the knowledge of the content, it's the application. Because once you take content, or once you take knowledge, and put it applic into application, that's when you begin to create the repetition and experience that creates a result. As your results conscious, solution oriented, now you're moving into a recovery state. Recovery is a state of being where you're no longer the mind-body connection to the events that would create your anxiety. Your anxiety is what drives your is what drives your addictions. Your addictions are your emotional addictions that keep you overwhelmed, separate from the results that you seek to create, so you can be and stay disappointed. One of the most important situations that you understand is that as an emotional addict, you receive a payoff. And even though you're going to say, well, I don't want this payoff, it's important that you understand that your ego does seek a result from that payoff because it gives you a way to avoid. And when you're addicted to chronically avoiding being your best, that's the payoff you receive. So if you've been doing this for a number of years, you've now developed a tolerance to it. And if you can consistently say, I don't know why I do this, but yet you can work a job, you can wait tables, you can sell pharmaceuticals, you can be a nurse, a practitioner, any multitude of situations that knowledge, education, and, re and reviewing and memorizing content allows you to be compensated what a job is worth, well, that's going to be contradictory when it requires you to have self-esteem, when it requires you to be self-directed, self-driven, self-inspired, self-motivated, because that's a different kind of energy. You can have a very low energy and a very low vibration and still do very well in certain situations, but your consciousness is your awareness. That's your emotional, etheric energy. That's the white light energy that people feel. That energy is called charisma. Now that leads to the content today because today is about emotional resiliency. Now what that actually means, it's somewhat of a contradictory term, but being, resili being resilient means that you're, you're not in force, but you're in the power of it. You're, re you're, you're not in resistance, you're in resilience. Now resistance is what holds you back. Resilience is what moves you forward. In resilience, however, it's going to be imperative, it's going to be important that your resilience comes from a relaxed state of body, not a frantic, frantic, have to, going to make it work, big goals with small action. So when you're in force, your body is going to create a counter force. And if you can't find someone to criticize you, then you'll criticize yourself in that win-lose black and white dichotomy called force. Now, as you step into your power, as you are power, as you live power, as you are no longer the mind-body connection to the events that create your anxiety, now you're moving into a flow. And in flow, there's no resistance because that flow becomes a prosperity consciousness. And that prosperity consciousness, you're coming from a place called love. And in love, you love what you do, love who you am, love other people, love God, love your country, love your dog, and there's a lot of love that you exude. And that type of love is not an airy-fairy love, it's real love because that's joy. And that type of joy love is that you're transmuting is also, it's inspirational and people feel it and in that felt feelings, that's when, they, that's when it becomes unconscious and people will say to you, I don't know who you are or what you're being, but I want a little piece of it. Can you tell me a little more about where I can find out what you're doing? I've been following you, and I'd like to find out more how I can join you. Now, this becomes unconscious marketing because there's no trying involved. There's no resistance, and you've moved out of a resistant state into a resilient state. Now, resilience is a place in the gap. The gap is the space between anxiety, fear, and doubt, and consciousness where you're able to break through, but not from a forced phase. You want, to, you want to start to understand that making yourself do something is force. Have to do it is forced. Back against the wall type of energy, well, you don't want to succeed because your back's against the wall. You want to succeed because you're committed to it. And once you're committed, then that, that moves you 
into the resilient state. Resiliency also means that there's no relapse because you, your, your emotional state has developed such a degree of consciousness that you will seldom ever relapse. And when you do, if you do, you will be able to bounce back very quickly because of the resiliency you have created. You'll be able to understand a mistake you made, an error in judgment. You'll be able to move right back into a fourth step in any type of recovery and see the error of your ways and be able to ask for forgiveness or move into a result or resolution very quickly without overwhelming yourself, criticizing yourself, making someone else wrong, but you'll be able to be and stay in a highly evolved emotional conscious state. Now, this is not difficult, it's new. Now, how do I? How do I get there? Well, it's not a place you get, it's a state that you be, and it's, it's here, it's not out there. Out there is not your getting, you're not going out there. So when people say, I'm not sure if I can put myself out there, well, you're not really putting yourself anywhere. You're sitting at a type, you're sitting at a keyboard typing. It's, it's a whole mindset situation that you learn to let go of. We have been brainwashed, we've been mind controlled to tiptoe quietly through life and arrive at a grave safely, medicating ourselves, intoxicating ourselves, no longer in doing the same situation over and over, not really understanding how to let go. Let go is not a nebulous term. Let go is a realistic term that allows you to separate your feelings from events. It's a skill. Once mastered, letting go becomes a habit. It becomes a routine. It becomes such a routine that there's no letting go because letting go is letting go. There is no letting go because you've already let go, and it's not something you can explain. It's an experienced state of being. Now, when you encounter someone else who lives letting go, you can smile at each other because you understand. Understanding is the awareness, and it's not a how do I state. So what is emotional resiliency? Emotional resiliency is developed through repetition and experience. It's the same as letting go. It starts with a longer breath cycle. If you live in a short breath cycle, you're like this, based on unresolved issues from past events that are repressed and held onto. As you move into a more elevated state of awareness, i.e. consciousness, you're now in your body not holding on to the unresolved issues that you don't understand, that you don't remember, that you're not sure how you're going to get over. And then the second phase is communication. How do I communicate with self? Begin to communicate from a committed state of consciousness, that you're committed to having an exceptional day. Goal set in much shorter increments. Goal set much more clearly defined. Goal set in one day, one week, 30 days, 90 days, and develop a daily method that you operate in. Start to be organized, detailed, methodical, systematic. Stop rebelling against self. Now, here are some of the ways that you are going to become much more resilient. There are, I put together six traits of the emotionally resilient being. So here they are. The first one is emotional awareness. That means emotionally you move out of anxiety and you move into awareness. So the first situation in emotional resilience is you, you live in a state called trust. But if you automatically say, I don't trust men, I don't trust women, I don't trust people, I don't trust anybody, then that means you're in an always state. That means you're always overwhelmed. That means you're always cautious. You're always waiting for the shoe to drop. You're always waiting for the worst case scenario to happen. Unfortunately, many people talk like this. Now, right now, there's a big storm coming to the Northeast. A lot of people are buying into the fear. They're fear mongering. The media is showing the circle, the meteorologists are showing, oh my God, this hurricane is going to hit. So, I mean, it, it creates a lot of panic. And so in, in any type of situation where there's a disaster or there's a strife or there's a, an economic collapse or your job gets taken away from you or there's a hostile takeover, any situation, the last thing you want to do is worry because worry creates an emotional response. It creates a corresponding response and you'll retract your reality, other people to fulfill your worry and your disappointment. Aloha, Gary from Hawaii. I see Gary's just rung on here. So you want to be able to move into, you want to autonomically, automatically move into the solution, not the problem. Now, I'm not suggesting that you don't evacuate, but I'm suggesting you don't panic. And if it requires you to evacuate, evacuate 
in a very relaxed body, not in a panic-stricken situation. Oh my God, what if we don't get out of here? What if we get trapped? What if we get rained on? What if we, what if, what, what if, what if? Anytime you're in a what if or a yeah, but, you are absolutely in a meltdown. And that meltdown situation will take you right down to the bottom of consciousness, right above grief and apathy in a place called rejection, abandonment, because you're, you're worried about everyone leaving you, leaving you behind, not being good enough. And in that type of overwhelmed state, the body's in a place called fight or flight. I mean, you are actually fighting against self, trying to wrestle with yourself, trying to talk yourself in, forcing yourself into doing what you're going to avoid. It creates an exhaustive state. And this is what many people do is they exhaust themselves by the way they talk to themselves. I take horrible pictures. Oh, that's my bad side. That's my good side. This is the way many people communicate with themselves, actually believing there's a good side and a bad side. This arm's fatter than the other arm. I mean, I've seen people do this in the way that they go about photographing themselves. Oh, I don't show up. I'm not photo I'm not photogenic. I mean, what does that even mean? It, well, it means it's your own perception of the situation as you begin to no longer be the mind-body connection to the events that create this anxiety, you will start to elevate your consciousness. Now, consciousness is measured in cycles per second. It's calibrated. It's measured energy. And the lower your consciousness, the lower your energy. The lower your energy, the more exhausted, the more tired you are, which affects your adrenal system, your immune system, your lymphatic system, and other organs in your body. Now, as you become emotionally resilient, what happens is your energy raises. Your cycles per second go up. Your emotional energy that you transmute is clearer. It's cleaner. And it, makes, it allows you to be more approachable. It allows you to, your energy becomes more attractive. And not in your physical self. You can actually look like you're younger. You begin the de-aging process by the way that you feel. It's a feel-felt situation. Where anxiety is a lot of think thought and you think yourself out of, out of recovery. That's what many people do is they, they oh my God, it's going to be so difficult. It's going to be so hard to have this day of sobriety. I've asked people, can you go a whole day without being critical? Oh my God, I'm not sure if I can do that. You have no idea. See, I do have an idea because I just watched that person React. That was a reaction. Emotional resiliency comes from a response. If you're emotionally overwhelmed and emotionally addicted to a set of feelings, it's because you're in a constant reactive state. And this is when someone says, yeah, but, yeah, but, yeah, but. I recently coached someone and counted them say, yeah, but, 11 times in just a few minutes. If you say guess mid-sentence frequently, and you, it means that you're, you're casting your doubt. It means your, your sentence structure is a contradiction. That's unfortunate what many people do. They're walking around the planet. If your dialogue with money is not conducive to creating it, then there's a high probability you have a lot of debt or you live in a lot of scarcity and you live in a money panic and you're worried about money. Now, money does not worry about you because money doesn't have a conscious, yet money shows up in people's pockets who are highly evolved consciously because they tend to attract people in situations that are much more inspiring, much more, much more value and service oriented. But if you don't have any value, then how can you attract people to see your value when you don't have any? It's like they have to look around you at the products and services that you are marketing and say, oh, move over. Oh, that is a good product benefit feature and service. So emotional resiliency comes from the commitment that you begin, like one day at a time. It's not a how do I state, it's an I am state. You go one day without being critical of self. One day. It's not that difficult. How do I do it? It's not how do you do it. It's an I am state. I am going to finish today without criticizing myself one time. I can commit to that. But what if I do? Well, see, there's the what if. So if you what if, you've already done it before you started because that one if just overwhelmed you. But as you begin to relax into your own body, as you move into a more elevated state of awareness, as you live in a place called no, as you know, and, and as you know, not N-O, but K-N-O-W, now you're certain. And that belief has a sense of certainty. In that sense of certainty, you will finish your day in an emotionally recovered state called consciousness. It means that you will finish today in a very relaxed body. You will go to bed and you will actually rest, not sleep. Now, rest is a different brainwave state. So that's also part of the emotional resilience that you have developed. Because when you rest, you can rest in shorter increments and wake up more renewed. Now the medical community has allowed you to believe that you require eight hours of sleep, yet there are certain people who can operate very, very effectively 
in a very high state of consciousness on less rest than most of society could ever fathom. I happen to be one of them. I typically don't tell people my rest cycles because they would say, oh my God, aren't you worried? And I see what many people want to do is they want to place anxiety on top of us. Now, those of us who live in a conscious state understand that and in our own emotional resiliency, we're able to neutralize that real quickly and not go into an explanation. The minute you go into an explanation with an addict, now you're addicted to their addictions and you are validating, justifying, and explaining. That's what emotional resilience is. You're, emo you're emotionally calibrated at a very high level of energy. Your awareness is so in tune. Your awareness is so aware. Your awareness is so keen that you can feel, sense, understand people's energies. You can feel it. You can measure it. And it's not a difficult situation. You don't have to be a neuroscientist to do it. It requires practical application, common strengths, common sense, and some street sense, and basic understanding. David Hawkins, now I'm going to show you this book. It, it'll show up backwards, but it's called, it's called Transcending Levels of Consciousness. It's on my table most of the day. It's one of my favorite books. So if you're seeing that backwards, do your best not to let me know that you saw it backwards. I already know that. So <laughs> it's amazing how many people want to prove us wrong. So I already know this, so I'm just letting you know. So that, that book is an absolutely fabulous book and a book I highly suggest that you study for the next several years. This is not a book you read. This is a book that you understand. What many people do is they blow through a book, don't really understand any of the content or the context, and then they don't understand why they can't put it into application because they're more concerned with reading the book page to page than they are extracting the content, putting it into application so that they can become emotionally resilient. Emotionally resilient means that you don't relapse, and if you do, it's very infrequent, and if you do, you have great bounce back ability. That is called the response rate. Now, if you react frequently and you overreact, then you're gonna move into anxiety frequently, then you'll be angry, you'll have hate, resentment, guilt, shame, abandoned rejection, overwhelmed feelings, grief, and apathy. Now, your personal responsibility, that is step two, on the six traits of emotionally resilient people. Now, if you are responsible, that means that you have the ability to respond. Now, responding is a reflex, it's like this. A reaction is like this. A, re a response is much more like this. It's a relaxed reflex. So in a sport, you can turn on a pitch in baseball and you can crush it. And in any type of sport where it's man-to-man, -man, boxing or judo or kickboxing or any of these situations, your ability to respond, adapt and adjust, and that type of responsive, in that responsibility, it means you have great reflexes. And in your communication style means you're able to respond quickly. You don't um and ah and check out and think and get and stay overwhelmed because you're no longer the mind-body connection to the events where you have to validate, justify, and explain yourself. Now, if you're a chronic explainer and a chronic validator, then yeah, but will show up frequently in your communication style. Yeah, but is the contradiction that most people use to never break through. It keeps them behind the glass, close to the finish line, but never quite good enough. They're not certain if they're quite good enough, quite pretty enough, quite smart enough, quite intelligent enough to be able to break through. That's a story that a large percent of society tells themselves, which keeps them in a very low energetic emotional state called emotional resistance. Now, emotional resiliency is where you break through. You break through from anxiety, fear, and doubt. You move into the bottom you move into the bottom of conscious awareness, which the cycles are about 200 cycles a second. As you start to elevate your energy, elevate your emotional state, you start to elevate up into 300 cycles a second, meaning that your energy starts to become high, not energy that you exercise in. I'm talking about relaxed energy, the way you come across, the way you transmute. You're as cool as the other side of the pillow. You walk into the room and you uplift the room with your energy, not with your self-confidence, not with the outfit you wear, although that can enhance some of it, but it's, it's not your outer beauty, it's the inner energy that you transmute that thou and you send into the universe. And that energy also comes from emotional resilience because at some point you separated your feelings from events and you did it enough through a repetition and experience that there's seldom to ever a relapse. I'd really like to be there. Well, you, it's a B state, you can be right now. 
it's not there, it's not out there, it's in here. And so in that state of awareness, it's a committed state, the way you communicate, the way you breathe, the way you feel, the way you trust, the way you sense. And in, as you heighten that sense, you'll live much more in intuition, extrasensory perception, but most importantly, in the simplicity of the transformation in a place called no, spelled K N O W. And when you know that you know, you won't doubt that you know. And when you know, there is no doubt because you know. And when you know, you trust. When you know, you're certain. When you know, you're in belief. And belief is your sense of certainty. And when you know, you will not be denied because you are so resilient that you've crossed the bridge of consciousness, that you are there. You live there. You stay there. It's a state you're going to be. Now, this doesn't mean you're positive. It's, it's a whole different, it's a different energetic state than positive and negative. Positive and negative is a black and white dichotomy called force and counterforce. This isn't about being positive. This is about being conscious. And in that consciousness, it's an elevated state of awareness where you know. Knowing, knowing is a different degree of, of positive. Many people try to be positive and they're forcing themselves to be positive. I'm going to get this if it kills me. Well, that's, there's, there's a degree of a results can be created by that, but it burns out quickly because of how forced being positive is. Now, don't construe that positive is not still an asset, but what I'm covering for you today is how to be and stay conscious. Be and stay conscious is a lot easier state to master than trying to be positive and then wrestling with your negativity, worried that you're going to relapse into being negative and you get so overwhelmed that you're already negative before you're positive. And unfortunately, that happens to a lot of good people. The ability to adapt and adjust. That's point three in the six traits of emotional resilience. That means that you are very skilled at calling yourself out. You know when you just lied and you call yourself out. You hear what people mean, not what they say. You're able to forgive very quickly, self and others. You understand when someone is attempting to show you up, put you in a position that you have to validate, justify, and explain yourself, and you don't buy it. You cut yourself off. You don't make people wrong, and you don't prove yourself right. You let go very quickly because you're seeking an end result that's favorable, either for self, win-win situations. You're not stuck in a dichotomy of right and wrong, win and lose, good and bad. You are you, and you are free. You're in a place called peace, and your peace is your power in this situation. Now, the, this, this ability to adapt and adjust, once again, is a repetition experience that's done over and over and over. And it's, a, it's not a think thought, it's a felt feel. And in, that, in this state of awareness, you're able to easily and effortlessly, in an emotionally resilient state, stay in a high level of consciousness. That's a no state, you're right there. So when you're, if you're prospecting, you're selling, you're communicating with someone, you're attentive, you're able to listen, you're able to hear what's meant, you're able to know what's going on in the conversation. You can hear the pauses. You can hear the word choices in someone else's communication because you're not trying to outfox someone, outthink someone. You're listening for the signs, the tells, the clues, and you're able to adapt and adjust quickly. You're able to take a word out of their sentence, put it into your next sentence, and end it with a question and move the conversation along very quickly. I'll state that again. You're listening. You're attentive. Someone says to you, I'm not sure. You're able to say, if you were sure, what would you say? And you're able to do that in a very relaxed body because you were able to adapt and adjust. Now, if you're in a sales business that requires you to create results, I mean, there's a script a lot of people will use. Well, the script is good. The skip script is a roadmap. But if you require to go to the bathroom, oftentimes that's not on the script. It means you have to pull off to the side of the road. Well, sometimes that script, if you're not winging it, but you have to be able to adapt and adjust because it's not about the script, it's about the result. Now the script will keep you on track, but it's your emotional state that will create the result. Because once someone asks you a question off the script and you're dependent, your, your self-confidence is dependent on staying on that script, well, if someone gets you off the script, then you're gonna feel overwhelmed. You're gonna feel rejected and or abandoned, and then you're gonna make a mistake, get in trouble, so you can create the ultimate outcome that you seek to avoid disappointment. Number four, perseverance. This is where tenacity becomes a part of your identity. It means you are so committed, but you're committed in a relaxed body. You're not committed in an intense body. You're not saying, 
by God, I'm going to do this if it kills me. Well, scars are souvenirs you never lose. The past is never far. I've been in that state before where I've been in so much apathy and I, I tried so hard to get sober that I just gave up because I had reached a state of despondence. And that type of state is called apathy. But as you start to elevate your consciousness, you move into a higher level of energy. You're coming from places of goodness, value, service, contribution. And you're, you're coming from that place in your emotional state. Then you're not attached to the outcome. You're more focused and your vision is different. It's right here and it's right now. You're able to sense, see, and feel what's going on. And then you're able to adapt and adjust easily and effortlessly because you're in your body, not in a, in a fight or flight state, waiting for the shoe to drop. Always, this always happens to me. I'm always in trouble. When you're in that state, there's no flexibility. There's no way you can adapt and adjust. The certainty that you'll create is disappointment. And if you're addicted to disappointment and you're worried about it, well, that, uh, that disappointment energy creates a corresponding response. So you'll attract your reality frequently, people and situations to fulfill those feelings. Now, as you have a better understanding of awareness that you begin to let go, you're, you're, you're moving into a whole different level of energy. You're moving into a different level of power. You're, you're moving into a place called esteem. And in that esteem, that's when you will attract your reality synchronistically more frequently. The parking spot, the booth at the restaurant, the first class seat that automatically gets upgraded, the seat that opens, the new, the new flight that already that opens up for you because you have to be there earlier. A whole multitude of situations because of who you are and what you are becoming. And I see Jennifer Myers is on this on this video today. Jennifer, great, great spending quality time with you over the weekend. Positive circle of influence. So what does that mean? It means in your influence. Now this past weekend, I hosted Breakthroughs to Success number 123, one of the most enlightened group of entrepreneurs that I ever had the privilege of collaborating with. I host that event four times a year. It's for my coaching clients. That's two and a half days of influence. It's two and a half days of consciousness. Two and a half days where it's a very safe environment to be able to address the cause that creates the effect. Now, on day two, a lot of the people come together. They feel like they've known each other all their lives because I've created an environment in a, in a relaxed state where people can come together and they can be honest. They can trust. They can release. They can let go. It's a much more relaxed environment. None of it's forced. It's all voluntary. And in that voluntary state, many people volunteer to let go. So who are you choosing to influence you? I mean, this, that's, your, that's your decision. That's your commitment. Now, unfortunately, many people stay in family situations and family tribes. They stay in businesses and jobs where the situation is toxic. I've, so I've coached several medical professionals who reiterate to me that they can no longer work in this environment because the profession doesn't have the same meaning that it used to. Although the, the profession is pure, the profession of absolutely empowering people, assisting people, helping people, that purity will always be there. It's the environments that get created in some of the corporate structures that creates a toxic agenda. And as you realize you don't belong there, now that's consciousness. So when you create those kinds of commitments and those types of decisions, when you're in relationships that are toxic and you say that, that I'm so done with this and you actually start to say, okay, that it's imperative for me that I let go in a relaxed body and I move on. And then you're not focused on leaving someone behind because people are going to stay where they are because of who they are. And number six, less critical of self. Now this is obviously the last point of the six six keys to being able to elevate your consciousness in the six traits of emotionally resilient entrepreneur or human being. Now this is a very important key. It means that you can go back to back days without being critical of self. Now here's what that doesn't mean. It doesn't mean that you're not honest. It doesn't mean that you're not aware. It doesn't mean you're in denial. It means that you're committed to self and you're committed to your best self that you will go back to back days or hours, however you want to start it. But you can go back to back hours without being critical. Oh, I'm so dumb. I'm stupid. Oh my God, I can't believe I did this again. I knew this would happen to me. Yeah, but. See, that that's the type of communication. There's my man, Matt Armstrong, from live from the country of Texas. Thank you, Matt. But that means that in that state of awareness, 
that you love yourself enough not to criticize yourself. It's not a how do I, it's a committed state. One day, one hour that you go without being critical. It means you're honest, you're open, you're aware. You understand the simple errors in judgment you create. You acknowledge that you made a mistake without being critical. So if you've already, if you've already blown your diet or if you've already had a drink today, well, move right back into recovery. Do your best to finish the day in a recovery state without being critical and love yourself for the person you're becoming and the person that you're committing to being. If you're on this video today or if you're watching this live, I offer free 20-minute coaching sessions. So if you're relatively new, you've never seen a live, if you've ever considered hiring me to be your coach, your mentor, or to assist you with your transformation or a free enterprise, you may contact me directly on Facebook by inboxing me or you can call me directly at 209-932-0227 for a free 20-minute coaching call or send me a message on Facebook. My name is Jeffrey Combs. I'm the president and founder of Golden Mastermind Seminars Incorporated. Every Tuesday, 4 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, Facebook Live, More Heart Than Talent. You have a great day. Thank you for listening to More Heart Than Talent Radio. If you enjoyed today's content and are committed to creating seven figures in the next 12 to 24 months, you can receive a copy of my Seven Steps to Seven Figures audio program for 50% off today. Let me ask you this. Do you frequently ask yourself, how do I questions? Do you feel stuck at a financial plateau? Do you suffer from entrepreneurial seizure? Would you like to learn the steps to reach seven figures? The impact of mastering the daily disciplines of a seven-figure income earner can assist you to change your finances, improve your relationships, improve your self-esteem, and so much more. But only if you know the steps to take to get there. To receive your audio download instantly of my audio program, Seven Steps to Seven Figures, Go to goldenmastermind.com forward slash seven to receive the training now.